Thank you very much, uh, um, Kickstarter. I'd like to uh, give a tribute to uh, Jean Dubousset. When I, I started in Canada in 91, it was extremely helpful uh, for me because I didn't know what to do with all my cases. And every time I was uh, going to a convention, I was uh, stealing the X-ray jacket uh, that she was supposed to send radiology, bring the X-ray to him, and he would tell me exactly what uh, I had to do. And uh, when I was coming back on Monday, I was doing... Uh, and what he had told me uh, to do. So uh, thanks again, Jean, for everything you, you did for me. And uh, you've been extremely helpful in my career. Um, I, I, how do I advance? I just... <laughs> I, I Thank can't you. Just... Okay. The, um, so what is important to correct sagittal ba balance? Uh, it's uh, because you see these uh, old people who, uh, who walk all crooked. And then when you do uh, their surgery, uh, that's what happened to them. You just give them a 20 years of a younger age uh, by just fixing their sagittal imbalance. So it is uh, uh, very important to uh, uh, get the sagittal balance right uh, because you see a difference be between an old person and a young person back again after the surgery. Uh, could you, I, so let's remember that the lordosis is, is uh, mostly in the lumbar spine between L4 and S1, two third. Uh, should happen here, and that's what most of our surgery should focus to when we correct the sagittal imbalance. So classically, uh, what can we do to correct the sagittal imbalance? Uh, Smith-Peterson osteotomy, uh, decal subtraction osteotomy, uh, VCR. How about anterior surgery, uh, either so, through uh, anterior lumbar double diffusion 4-5-S1 or lateral? Uh, of course, there's still a need to do a pedicle subtraction osteotomy or VCR when the spine is always fused and people think I'm not doing any uh, PSO VCR. No, we still do it. The patient with ankylosing spondylitis, as you can see, uh, will require a two-level PSO uh, so we could uh, get him uh, straight. So when everything is fused uh, anteriorly and posteriorly, there is a need to do a pedicle subtraction osteotomy or VCR. However, when there's a disc that's free, you can go and early and we're going to see some examples. So especially that the three column osteotomies give you a big rate of complications uh, as opposed to uh, uh, front and back. So what can we do with the anterior surgery? We can do first a straight anterior uh, uh, fusion uh, and posterior fusion. This is a patient who had a previous uh, three to five uh, fusion for spinal stenosis and he had still persistent low back pain. And this patient was a retired uh, pilot and he couldn't play golf. He couldn't do anything. And the surgeon would say, I'm sorry, mission accomplished. There's nothing I can do for you. Looking at his lumbar X-ray, it looks to be okay. But if you look at his EOS film, he is totally unbalanced. And uh, the imbalance he has, plus the lumbar fusion he has, um, gives him a lot of pain. So. Uh, we did uh, something quite simple, went in the front, the 5-1, and put a cage uh, of 25, 30 degrees of correction in the front and revised him posteriorly. And then he was balanced, no more back pain, playing golf and having a, a, a perfect life. And this patient is now a three years full up, doing extremely well. Um, and that's his EOS. You can see the amount of correction we've been able to achieve before and after with the uh, anterior lumbar interval diffusion at 5.1. Now you can also uh, treat the flat back after Harrington instrumentation uh, with the anterior and posterior surgery. This is 64 years old. She had a previous Harry Lukey uh, 30 years before. She did fine for some time and then she couldn't function anymore. She has a severe sagittal imbalance. The pelvis is retroverted. Sagittal spine disease at 4, 5, and 5, 1. And um, her EOS film shows a significant um, sagittal uh, malalignment. So the same thing we did for this patient. We went into early at 5, 1, and then corrected the uh, previous um, instrumentation, Harry Lukey, to the new lombosacral uh, instrumentation. Uh, patients uh, spent... Uh, uh, three days in the hospital with uh, uh, 300 cc of blood loss, and uh, she did very well. How can we do something a little bit more complex with anterior surgery? And this is a patient, she's 81 years of age. She had multiple previous surgery, 
And um, I took this uh, picture in the uh, pre-uploading and didn't realize that my iPhone was on a uh, live. It's only when I, I look at the iPhone picture, I see, oh my God, she can't breathe anymore. L look at all the, um, the problems she has in breathing. She has to push on a cane and, and just get a little bit better sagittal balance uh, to breathe. So I think this uh, uh, mistake I did with my iPhone to take the live picture was very telling for me. I just realized that the people who have sexual imbalance have also difficulty breathing. Uh, and that's uh, the way she is. So you can see from her uh, EOS film, she needs a 45, 50 degree of correction. Uh, so of course you can do a, a pedicure subtraction astronomy at this level, but that's going to be a daunting task. Uh, now, if you, no, let's go, can you go back? Um, now, if we look at the CT myelogram of this patient, you can see on the top of it, she had multiple level laminectomy, which is going to make your PSO uh, very painful. You're going to need to pick around the dura for the, all the day before you can do your pedicle subtraction astronomy. And um, plus all the complication and the pedicle subtraction astronomy is probably not going to be enough to achieve the goal. So what can we do for this patient? She has one level, five one discus space that's free. So let's go for it. Let's do the correction at five one. So we're going to early. So that's the way she's uh, supplying the table, a little bit of correction by spontaneous uh, laying down the table. We take a cage and we, uh, we even do uh, more angle on the cage. We just trim the cage made a peak to get this cage 30 degrees to 40, 45 degrees. Then we insert the cage. And I realized during the CM fluoroscopy that the cage is misplaced. So I've only achieved body distraction during my anterior surgery. So I go and change uh, the cage to get a better contact with the super and plate of S1. But you can see it's still some body distraction. But at least the cage is much better uh, positioned, as you can see on the right hand side. And then when we're going posteriorly, we're going to do the Smith Peterson astronomy. So, first you see the uh, correction when the patient is prone on the table, it's already a little bit better. You do your Smith Peterson astronomy, you compress, you extend the hip, and you get the full correction. And that's the patient standing up after only an L5S1 anterior fusion and no osteonomies, uh, and uh, well, except for the Smith-Peterson osteonomies in the back to control the L5 nerve root. And you can see that she's perfectly straight. She has no pain. She has more than one year follow-up. She has a slight P P proximal junctional kyphosis, but she's doing extremely well. And the surgery was simple. Um, now, we can also do other things when enter surgery. We can do uh, anti psoas uh, cages, hyperlordotic uh, cages. I'm a little bit against the x lift thing because you go through the psoas, and then you have to reject the LL, uh, which is difficult if you do it through a next lift um, procedure. So I remain classic. I do mini open uh, mm -hmm. lateral anti psoas uh, technique. Mm -hmm. So this is another patient with a surgical imbalance, as you can see. She had a previous fusion for five. And um, but uh, I cannot really go until at 5-1 because she had multiple previous abdominal surgery. Uh, she had this uteropexy. She had the, uh, uh, she's obese. So we thought it was going to be quite challenging to go until at that 5-S1. So we decided to get the low doses at the other levels uh, in, in the lumbar spine. And we went therefore that 2-3-3-4, uh, resect the ALL to be able to insert hypolytic cages at uh, two, three, and three, four. We got all the low doses at this level, which is not ideal in this patient, and we could still do the job. And uh, the uh, patient uh, did very well with uh, very uh, little pain. Uh, so in some cases, we have to combine uh, the anterior and the lateral uh, approach. This is a patient who had a previous lumbar spine surgery with a fusion uh, five, four, three, two to five, as you can see, totally fuse, uh, previous laminectomy, which is going to make your uh, pedicle subtraction astronomy extremely painful. So we stage this patient. We do a first stage five, one, uh, cage at five, one, 
and then we we, we position the patient and put the, another cage at one two and then three days later we uh, would go posteriorly and put the rods in uh, with the very little uh, posture work uh, because uh, the correction has already been achieved anteriorly so there's no need to do complex uh, posture astronomy in this case as you can see uh, that a balance was achieved and that's the way she was before and afterwards uh, a bedside uh, and we could achieve a good um, uh, alignment so now it comes to a more complex how about overpowering a previous uh, uh, fusion. So our overpower just a, a previous fusion. This is a patient who had multiple spine surgery, scoliosis surgery, and then extension to the uh, sacrum. But she has a psoriasis at 5.1, which is obvious where you see the radiolucency of the screws at S1. And she had a previous stilif as well at 5.1, as responsible of uh, leg pain as well. So uh, we could go posteriorly, of course, and remove uh, the instrumentation, remove the teeth posteriorly, and then uh, do correction with pedicles protraction astronomy, but this becomes daunting to do that. So instead, we went in the front, remove the teeth spacer from the front, put a cage at this level, and uh, overpowered the, the previous rod. That means we uh, the previous rods and instrumentation was there, but as there was a psoriasis, it's possible anything you, you, uh, you can move anything you want from the front if you have a psoriasis. You just need to take uh, uh, careful steps not to violate the end plates, and then you can move anything you want if there is a psoriasis. You do not need to do the classic 540 sequence back uh, inst posture instrumentation removal going to the front and going to the back. There's no need to do that. You can do everything you want from the front if there's a psoriasis. And that's the alignment we had uh, after a, a revision posture instrumentation and the previous anterior surgery we had. Uh, in some cases, you can see this uh, patient had uh, multiple T lif. She is totally decompensated as well. And instead of doing a pedicle subtraction astronomy in the back, we went in the front as well remove the TDF spacer, put uh, a leaf at uh, multiple level in our cases, got the whole correction from the front, despite the posture instrumentation she had, and we could uh, get the uh, uh, good alignment that she had. That's a, a pre and post stop you can see. So we've been able to remove the TDF spacers and overpower the posture instrumentation. This, you have to be careful not to violate the end plate, but it's perfectly feasible if you use a good distractor that uh, fill the, uh, the total surface of the vertebral bodies, you extend the table and uh, you go progressively uh, step by step to be able to overpower the posture instrumentations. So when we look at the literature result, the first paper we should look at is the paper from Costwick 40 years ago where he was doing the anterior and posterior astronomy, and he could get a good correction of his low doses. You have more recent paper from a, a Albania group that shows as well the uh, uh, we can get some low doses increase yet in the series that was not a very much improvement, only 12 degrees in average. Um, now other papers have shown that it's uh, possible also to get uh, uh, correction and that the complication rate uh, uh, was, uh, if you do lateral trans you had less blood loss, and uh, but the overall complication rate was same as a PSO, which is not our experience. Uh, now we've published several years ago on our initial series of patients we treated with a stage and surgery and posterior instrumentation and fusion. And we had a, a far less complication than our series of PSO uh, for instance, our neurology complication is uh, only 5% when we're doing this, as opposed to PSO, which is in the literature between 15 and 30%. Our blood loss is far less, and the amount of correction is pretty satisfactory. But you can achieve any correction you want once you've done the anterior release, the cage, and the posterior astronomy. It's possible, we've shown you some example, to achieve even at one level 40 degrees of correction. It is not desirable in all the cases. In most cases, you only need 
20, 25 degrees. So you only shoot for 20, 25 degrees when you need it. But if you want it, you could uh, potentially get uh, 45 degrees, which obviously is not, most cases it's not necessary. So I think there's a change of paradigm. If you have a circumferential fusion, obviously a posterior technique like uh, pedicle social astronomy or VCR are still there to stay. But if you have a disc in the front that's not fused, you can go for it, achieve a good correction through this disc space, and then you can go posteriorly with or without posterior astronomy and achieve your goal with less complication. Thank you. Vincent, that was a uh, terrific talk. We have a couple comments. Vincent, thank you so much. Um, it's great to hear you uh, talk on this topic again. Uh, we completely agree with you. We think, you know, uh, the average of 12 degrees following an uh, ACR or ALL release is probably an underestimate. You know, that, that was the early literature. A lot of it is also the positioning of the patient. Remember, you know, these patients are uh, positioned in the lateral decubitus uh, position. So they are not extracting the maximal benefit from the segmental lordosis that could be there had they been prone. Now with the new techniques of performing everything in the prone position, uh, which we've found, you can increase that lordosis, segmental lordosis even more when you divide the ALL. And you're able to get better apposition between the implant ends and the end plate of the vertebrae. So we, we found that to be extremely important as well. And uh, you know that that's akin to needing to go to the back to compress to get the implant to, to better fit there too. Um, you know, I I really took from your talk that you can do all of these corrections except for when there's fusion across the disc space. What are your thoughts about doing osteotomies in the anterior or in the lateral position across the disc space and then compressing from the back? Uh, is that something that you foresee happening? Yeah. I think that's a very good question. First, I don't have any experience on the uh, prone positioning, uh, doing this, everything prone. I'm a little bit uh, old school. I still do this uh, in the lateral position. Uh, as to do uh, the uh, all uh, uh, anti osteonomies, uh, I think if the uh, anti-fusion is, uh, is bad, uh, you can uh, go anteriorly. That's what we've done when we move the TDF uh, cages from the front. Uh, however, you should study the uh, bone mineral density. Uh, we study it on the uh, CT scan, and because uh, you may have extra me, uh, extreme weak bones uh, anteriorly if you have a fusion, you know, because all the uh, dense bone is going to be through the fusion, and anteriorly it's going to be extremely weak. So you may not be able to. Uh, uh, overpower doing anything uh, from the front. So now if the disc is not fused, it's a bit different because the vertebra where the disc is not fused still has regained some strength. Uh, so, so you can uh, move this vertebra with anterior surgery. Uh, now if it's totally fused uh, uh, from the front, uh, I, I usually, uh, I, 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 I don't have any experience to, uh, to go in a, in a fusion, especially in this old, old uh, the patient who have osteoporosis, uh, and try to correct everything from the front, previously anterior fusion of the discus space, unless there is a transforces, unless the fusion was really bad, and uh, uh, that which would be a different thing. 